Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about making a webcomic um, for Webtoon or just a webcomic for Instagram, Twitter, just small little webcomics. I'm going to be starting to make webcomics soon. I'm really excited. Um, I've always wanted to do this and I always, when I was younger, used to read Webtoon a lot in webcomics. I'm probably not going to make it a big one, like a giant one, because I want to practice drawing. Not that you can improve by doing comics, you definitely can, but I like doing more portrait and like studies and stuff, so it's going to be hard to do one of, you know what I mean, it's just, it's a lot. So I'm thinking about doing short little comic strips of posting to Webtoon or posting to my social media that's linked on YouTube. I'm going to be separating this into different categories, detailing each step, how you would go along. If you want to come along with me on the journey to show you how to get started because I am learning these things so I think this would be helpful information for you guys as well in case you do want to start a webcomic as well and you've always wanted to just like me. It does not have to be a project that's for like the rest of your life. This is just like a fun little thing that I always want to try. So I thought I would do this because we do do some art on the channel. I do tons of art outside of the channel. So I thought it would be really fun to try. But um, the beginning step is probably going to be separated, separated into a few steps. So the first step would be getting your story together. I have my story together. My story is going to basically be about two people that choose career paths as streamers. One of them streams art and video games. The other one streams video games. And it shows the girl. She's going to be showing different paths that she could have chosen because she has a lot of passions. But she chose the streaming path and the art path and showing how happy she is with the path that she chose and the different ways how her future could have changed. And then the guy is gonna be a streamer that streams video games. I'm still coming up with his backstory, but I think he's just gonna be streaming and it's gonna show how they end up meeting and end up working together and how even though this girl may feel unsure about which path she should have chosen in life or she likes so many things that she could have chosen um, really anything, that this guy and her end up teaming up and making it worth it and realizing that she's happy and content with what she chose and how they build a friendship and how it is to live with each other. So I thought that would be a really cute um, comic idea. I'm really excited to start it. And then your second step would be getting your resources. I did tons of research for this. I literally looked on, it wasn't that hard though. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't that hard. I looked on YouTube, I looked up multiple people, I looked on so Twitter, I looked on multiple sources like Instagram. I looked everywhere, I looked at examples, comics, example comics on Instagram, example comics on Webtoon. You can easily find Webtoons or comics on. But um, everywhere, I literally looked everywhere for examples and I looked up YouTube videos, watched tons of YouTube videos and I narrowed it down to a few YouTube videos that I really, really liked that I would recommend for you guys. So the first one that I would have to recommend for you guys would probably be As Morshida's studio. Um, his video was really good. He talks about starting Webtoon. All of these talk about starting Webtoon or getting used to Clip Studio. Um, you could use Krita, you could use other sources. You don't have to use Clip Studio or Krita only. You could use other different kind of um, art uh, programs that you can make comics. But I'm probably gonna be using Clip Studio. I should probably put that down now. But yeah, I'll probably be using Clip Studio. So these are generally based around Clip Studio. And then Ono oh Nina did also um, a introduction to making Webtoon, a mini tutorial kind of in her process around four months ago. He, S. she just did his around one year ago. And then the last one is Jake Henry Draws. He did that around two years ago on YouTube. These are all on YouTube. He did a tutorial on basically making web comic and how to get started as well. I use these videos to help me get started. So I'm gonna link them in the description below. Shout out to these guys because they definitely show you how to get started and give you a good, good overview of how to use Clip Studio. I'll be linking all of them down below. I watched those videos several times and I've kind of gotten used to the overlay. I'm going to be showing you guys Clip Studio's overlay. I could show you Krita if you want me to, let me know down below the basics of it. But I probably will be showing you Krita in this video because I'll be, or not Krita, Clip Studio because I'll be using Clip Studio to make comics. For me personally, I'm just going to do that. Because Clip Studio seems like it has tons of features, like animation, I've been checking it out, it seems great. So I'm probably going to be using Clip Studio. Um, it really isn't that, I don't think it's that bad. Like I said, I'm gonna do about an, a minute or a second. Um, I'm gonna be doing a little brief overview of using Clip Studio and how I learned how to use it so that you guys can get started making your own comics as well and get familiar with the design and like the settings that you should use for the pages that you wanna do. Like I said, check out the videos that I linked down below with these awesome YouTubers to find out more, but I'm gonna give you a introdu little introduction soon. Okay, so we're gonna go over just the basic tools for this app, obviously the zoom tool, zoom in and out with the scroll wheel for the mouse, and then you have the move tool, you can use the hand, you can also rotate as well, and you can also add sub tools, so if you want to rotate the screen, 
Bam, you see? Click on the rotate. Let's control Z that. Oops, I actually rotated too much. Now I'm kind of tripping out. Let me just fix that really quickly. Where were we? Okay, let me move back down. Okay, we're just gonna ignore that for now. And then you come down here and you have the operation tool. You can select the object, select layer, light table, edit timeline. So for example, if you were to draw something, we're gonna change the color to green. We go to operation tool, we're selecting an object. So we can move that object around just like this. Pretty self-explanatory like that. You can do it with layers, anything else. And then you have the move layer. You can also move it with this, but you have the move layer. You can go up and down the layer. And you can scroll down. You have the move tone pattern and the move grid as well. And then you have the selection tool, which you can either be a rectangle, eclipse, lasso, polygon, polyline, I mean, a selection pen, erase selection, shrink selection. Think of it as Photoshop. If you ever use Photoshop, you can select things. And then you can deselect them as well by going to select, deselect. Or you can go to inverted as well to select something inverted. And then you can go to the auto select, which is a magical brush, which obviously selects things, refers to editing layer only, referred to all layers, selection for referred layers. And they have different modes to add selection, move from selection. And then there's the eyedropper tool. So for example, if you wanted to use a certain color and you wanted to select it, you would just eyedrop it. Actually, let me put two, let me put two colors. You just put two colors down. Like that, there we go. Okay, and then use eyedropper tool. So we have this orangish reddish color selected, and then if you eyedrop, obviously you'd get the green. The pen tool, just draw with the pen tool pretty self-explanatory you can change the brush size the pen change it to marker they have different ones called the g pen real g pen mapping pen etc you can change the brush size opacity how big it is um how faint it is the stabilization anti-lessing all these things and then here are the different sizes and here is the color wheel as well you can also use a pencil to do light sketches if you want to do some line art or just some light sketches to lay out and then you have the brush tool. This one's a lot more, as you can see, it's the opacity. And you can't really, it's its not really, it's very, very faint, very, very faint. And then you have the airbrush where you can just very lightly brush on almost like air, uh, spray painting. Then you have the special brush. I would call it the special brush. There's many names for it. There's a, uh, people say decoration brush, there's multiple names, but you can add sparkles. They have many more options here. For example, glitter, if you want to add a little, look at that, see? Glitter, it looks really cool actually. Um, and they have many more. And they have feathers, petals, oh, petals would look really cool. See, petals like dark green petals. They have so many, so many options. And then the eraser tool, which I'm definitely gonna be using right now. So let's increase that size and erase everything that we drew because it looks like a mess. And then the blending tool, which is when you would blend two colors together. So let's get the, let's see, let's use green. This is going to look, <laughs> matters which color we use. And let's use blue. Okay, so let's use the blending tool. And then just rub that in and you get an in-between color. You zoom in, you get that in-between color. Okay, let's go back to eraser and erase that. And then you have the liquify tool which makes any colors that you make liquidy almost like water like as you can see here you have liquify and then you have these different modes for example expand pinch and this kind of if you do click on a different mode it changes how it pushes so this one's going to push it see how it pushes it away like almost like water you can create really cool effects with this and make it look like water really easily it's kind of a cheat and then you can expand it you see i'm pressing and it's expanding it more so try out those modes definitely they would be a lot of fun and i think they can be helpful and then you have the paint bucket. So just throw in this paint bucket, slap it down, put on different things. And there you go, the whole thing's that color. Let me undo that. There we go, okay. And then you have the gradient. So if you want a blue gradient, you just swipe down, hold it, click down on the mouse, and then let go and slide it. And there you go, you have a pretty blue, it almost looks like a sky you can use for comics, webtoons. And they have different shapes, they have different transparencies, 
currently have the background, the stripe, the photosphere, blue sky, see different modes like this, exactly what I was describing, blue sky, perfect, easy, quick way to get blue sky, and different sizes down below as well as opacity, blending modes, sort of the angle, and then they have, as well as the figure tool, you can draw figures, like that, a straight line, you can draw a curve, and then you just go like that. A lot of this is similar to Photoshop. Very, very similar. If you use Photoshop, this will be no problem for you. And then they have the frame border, which you can select, especially when you want to do want to make a comic. Um, I usually set mine around seven, and you would just click on the outside, and you see how it selects it, and then you could just adjust it by moving the mouse around, the width and the height. You don't really need to it's not too hard to change it, you just need to move the mouse to the left or right or up and down to change the height for up and down, obviously. Um, you would move it up or down and then for the width, left or right, and then just let go. And there you go, you have a nice border. I may increase the border size though, it could be a little bit more bigger, maybe get the color. Let me try again. There you go, see and it blocks out the rest of it. You have the ruler. They have different ones, linear ruler, curve ruler, figure ruler, they have symmetry, perspective, perspective can help when you want to do um, a 3D perspective, different types of perspective, and then symmetry is super duper helpful as well. For example, if you draw something and you want it to reflect on the same, what is it, the other side, let's use the, where is it, symmetrical ruler. So let's draw that, and then let's go back in and draw something. You see, it's reflecting on that side, so if you don't want to draw eyes, again, <laughs> you can use the symmetry tool, it'll make it easier. Okay, let's undo all that, and then let's try out, I want to try out the perspective. Alright, let's try the perspective. So there's a perspective, so it's obviously going to be from there, so you see it's following the perspective lines. So everything that I'm doing, as long as I bring it close to the line, if I'm doing it exactly on the line, it's creating it exactly on that perspective. And it's all coming from this top area right over here, because I clicked it and put the perspective right there. So these um, tools are really helpful for comics as well. Okay, let's erase all that. I no. Yeah, we can, well, we can paint fucking it either way. Just put it all white. And then we also have the typing tool, the text, where you can just put in some text. Let's click it. So, I love, oh, why is that? That's white, it should be black. I love pancakes. Pancakes. I do love pancakes. So grab that, move it, oops. Oh, we have to use the, see, this is where the operation tool is really handy, so you don't have to select the whole layer. So use the operation tool and you can grab that. And then you can also go to the text and adjust it. So for example, you have the style, bold, italic, underline, slant, strikeout, um, center aligned, right aligned, left aligned, text direction, text color, mode, size, fonts especially. And then they have the bubbles, so the balloon. So you can click and drag and you have a balloon that you can type in. You have a round balloon, a clipped balloon, a curved balloon, a thought balloon. This is also really helpy for making, oh, helpful for making comics. You just go. Oops, it's white. So you just cut it up. Then um, after that, we have the correct liner tool, pinch point vector, connect vector lines. You can connect two points together. And then after that, it's just selecting a color. So this is the basic overview. See you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.